He could go. Burst of speed. Heisman Memorial Trophy. Bryce Young. <laughs> Tide and welcome to the Crimson Tide production studio right here inside of Bryant Denny Stadium for another episode of Tide TV this week. I'm Kenzie Hughes, joined by my co-host Roger Hoover. Roll Tide, Roger, it's great to have you back. Yeah, good to be back in town again these weeks. Uh, it's kind of tough with women's basketball travel, but good to be back on uh, Tide TV this week talking about more Alabama wins. More Alabama wins and you're a well-traveled man, but guess what? There is a new number one in town, baby. That's right, Kenzie. The Alabama men's basketball team is now the number one team in the country. The Associated Press moved Alabama up two spots this week from number three to number one. The Crimson Tide received 38 of the 62 first place votes. Number two, Houston, who the Tide beat earlier this season, received 22 and Purdue collected the other two first place votes. It's just the third time in school history the Crimson Tide have earned the number one ranking in the AP Top 25. And the Crimson Tide were voted number one in the coaches' top 25 as well. It's the first time in program history that Alabama has held the number one spot in the coaches' top 25. It's also the first time in school history that both Alabama football and men's basketball are number one in the same season. Hey, tied on top, and what a season it's been so far, Roger, and what a game it was this past Saturday down on the Plains. ESPN College Game Day was in Auburn for the Crimson Tide's matchup with the Tigers. Football's been a regular on College Game Day since Coach Saban has arrived, but it's the first time the Crimson Tide men's basketball team has been a part of the program. It was a crazy atmosphere inside Neville Arena. At Auburn jumped out to a 5-0 lead with the Tigers leading the majority of the first half. Alabama didn't take their first lead until just over seven minutes to go in the first when Brandon Miller put the Tide in front 23-22. Both teams battled back and forth with the game tied at 37 at the half. Auburn took the lead in the second and led until this three-point shot from beyond the arc by Rylan Griffin to put the Tide back on top 50-49 with 14.40 to go. Rylan Griffin put Bama up four with another big time three. This one made it 66 to 62 Crimson Tide. From there, the Tide never trailed again. With time winding down, Auburn was still pressuring the ball handler, so Griffin found Charles Bediaco, who slammed it home to put the exclamation mark on the Tide's victory as Alabama defeated Auburn at Auburn 77 to 69. Way to go, angry Chuck. Alabama's bench outscored Auburn's 25 to 14. Freshman Rylan Griffin had 16 of those 25 as he led the Tide with 16 points on five of seven shooting from the field and three Three of four from beyond the arc. Mark Sears also had a great game shooting as he scored 15 points on five of seven from the floor and two out of three on three pointers to go along with six rebounds and three steals. Brandon Miller finished with 13 and six boards and Jaden Bradley had 12 as the Tide dominated the Tigers in the paint, 44 points to 20. That win improved Alabama's record to 22-3 and and a perfect 12-0 and in SEC play. It's great any time you can beat your in-state rival, but it was also extra special at their own arena with college game day from ESPN in attendance as well. It was an awesome atmosphere. So let's take an all-access look at the Tide's big win over Auburn. Continues 
to attack the basket. Clowney all alone the assist to Sears and tied back on top. This team is really good. The depth is impressive. We got a tough one every time. Ryan Griffin, Riley, step back three. Quite so lovely is Orange leaving the building early and a dunk from Betty Ako. The time is 12 and 0 in Southeastern Conference play. Wow, what a win! 77 69 is your final here at Auburn. I'll tell you what, Roger, it is great to see the guys celebrate and enjoy a win. Yeah, it was a big win to celebrate, and on Wednesday night, it was another big matchup for the Crimson Tide. A top 10 game is number one at ranked Alabama, took on 10th ranked Tennessee. Back at your land in Knoxville, it was another tough atmosphere on the road for the Tide for the second game in a row. Going into the matchup, the Vols led the nation in defensive efficiency, and that showed as they forced the Crimson Tide to commit 19 turnovers. Tennessee scored 26 points off of those turnovers compared to just two points for the Tide off the ball's eight turnovers. That was huge in the game, along with the Tide's inability to knock down shots. Bama shot just 35% from the floor and 37% from beyond the arc. Score was tied at 29 all at the half, but Alabama was never able to lead in the second half. Tying the score just once at 40 all on a Brandon Miller three-pointer. In the end, turnovers and Tennessee's physical defense just too much as the Vols handed number one Alabama their first SEC loss of the season 68 to 59. We didn't finish at the rim well I mean but they've got shot blocking they got presence at the rim we we shot six of 20 at the rim for 30 percent so you know if you finish 30 percent at the rim and have 19 turnovers you're gonna make it really hard on on yourself to win. I, I thought our defense was good enough to win the game. We ended up out rebounding them. They're a great rebounding team. You know, Brandon and Clowney with 11 and 10 rebounds each. I uh, thought they played pretty well on the, on the glass, but we just, our, our offense let us down tonight. Brandon Miller finished with his sixth double-double of the season with a team-high 15 points to go along with 10 rebounds. Jaden Bradley scored 14 points and had team highs with four assists and two steals. Namari Burnett came off the bench to collect 11 points while Noah Clowney finished with seven points and a team leading 11 rebounds. And once again, Brandon Miller was named SEC Freshman of the Week. It's the sixth time this season Miller has earned the honor. And you know what, Roger? The NBA is renaming their awards after players. Maybe after this season they can rename it to the Brandon Miller Freshman of the Week Award. Not a bad idea at all, Kenzie. I'm sure he's going to get a couple more of those before the season is over as well. Also, the Alabama women's basketball team picked up a big win over their in-state rival as well. We'll have those highlights when we return. Tide TV this week is presented by the University of Alabama, where legends are made. Ford, for great offers on F-150, see your local Ford dealer. Proud sponsor of the Crimson Tide. Great competitor, just beautiful to watch from start to finish. Practice is paying off, and she knows it. Beautiful. It's going to be a big number. And sticks that landing. Beautiful landing. Oh, my God. Perfect stop. How about some noise at the Roach House? Sliding it around the tag is Dowling. Ashley Prangy, and Alabama takes the lead. That's well hit to center. The Montana Fouts got her. Jenna Johnson. Executed. She's looking for more. That's gone. Alabama answers right back to grab the lead. Swing and a miss. Strike three, and that is your ball. Swing, miss, ball game. Are you kidding me? Welcome back to Tide TV this week. It was rivalry weekend for the Tide as the men and women's basketball teams took on Auburn. After gymnastics defeated Auburn last week and then the men's basketball team took care of the Tigers on Saturday, it was time for the women's basketball team on Sunday. It was also the Tide's power of pink match. It was a low scoring opening period as Alabama led by three after the first 10 minutes of play, 11 to eight. 
Auburn had the lead by just one at 16 to 15 with over six minutes to go in the half, but Alabama closed out the second quarter on a 16 to five run, highlighted by nine points from Aliyah Nye as Alabama led at the half 31 to 21. Alabama increased their lead to start the second half, scoring seven consecutive points, capped off with this three from Brittany Davis, but the tied up 17 at 38 to 21. Alabama dominated the second half of play, outscoring Auburn 38 to 25 as the tide rolled to their ninth consecutive win over the Tigers with the 69 to 46 win. I thought our kids really came out and played with a purpose, you know, to have nine in a row, which is a school record. Uh, man, it's amazing, absolutely amazing, and I'm so proud for our kids. Um, you know, Britt's second straight double-double, um, career high 17 rebounds. So 17 rebounds and 18 points, and then to have four and double figures, SA and Ryan Cobbins play, and Aaliyah, it's just, just incredible effort from our team. What a game for Brittany Davis as she had her second consecutive double-double. Davis finished with 18 points and a career-high 17 rebounds. Sarah Ashley Barker scored 11 with three rebounds and a game-high five assists. They were absolutely stocking the stats up, and Aaliyah Nye finished with 11 points, and Ryan Covins totaled a season-high 10 points to go along with three rebounds in the win. That win improved the Tide's record to 19 and 6 overall and 8 and 4 in the SEC. Alabama is currently 22 in the net rankings and 8 seed in the latest bracketology. And with those back-to-back double-double performances, Tide's Brittany Davis was named the SEC Player of the Week. Davis averaged 20 points and 14 rebounds in Alabama's wins over Kentucky and Auburn. Montana Fouts tied a career high this past weekend as the Alabama softball team opened their season at home. We'll tell you what that career high was coming up next. Tide TV This Week is presented by Ford. For great offers on F-150, see your local Ford dealer. Proud sponsor of the Crimson Tide, the University of Alabama, where legends are made. Welcome back to Tide TV This Week. I'm Kenzie Hughes, joined by my co-host, Roger Hoover. Roger, softball has a great following here at the University of Alabama, and the fans showed up this past weekend at Rhodes Stadium. They certainly did, and for the first time since 2010, Patrick Murphy's squad opened the season at home as the six-ranked Crimson Tide hosted Lehigh and Georgia Southern for the leadoff classic. The Tide opened the weekend with a double header on Friday. Despite home runs from Ashley Prangy and Emma Broadfoot in the game one against Lehigh, the Mountain Hawks' bats were just too much. Alabama dropped game one to Lehigh, seven to four. But the Crimson Tide bounced back in game two against Georgia Southern. With the Eagles up two nothing in the fourth, Larissa Pruitt doubled down the left field line to tie the game at two. Kelly Hevlin then put the Crimson Tide on top as she brought her home with a single up the middle. Then in the fifth, it was Hevlin again. This time it was a three run bomb over the wall at center. That made it eight to two Bama and that would be the final. Montana Fouts went the distance for the win as she tied her career high, striking out 16 batters. On Saturday, Alabama closed out the leadoff classic with their second consecutive win over Georgia Southern. With Alabama up 4-1 in the fourth, the tide exploded for nine runs. With the bases loaded, Jenna Johnson cleared them with a double down the left field line to make it 9-1 Crimson Tide. The final blow came from Kinley Kahalen. With runners on the corners, the freshman from Trustville hit a rope to right center. It gets to the wall, and that was a mistake. And her Crimson Tide this debut this weekend, she makes a splash, batting leadoff with the inside the park home run. Montana Fouts came in to get the final three outs and shut the door on the Eagles as Alabama picked up its second win of the weekend with a 13-1 run rule victory in five innings. When the leadoff keeps getting on, it just pushes everybody forward. So she was on base three times. She took two walks, which was big for her. Hit the inside park home run, uh, but just 
passes the baton down. That's what we want. And then Prangy right behind her is two for two with her walk, so she was on base three times. So it was a good day offensively, and especially that nine run inning. And, you know, defense was good. Um, we didn't walk too many people pitching wise. Uh, base running was good. So overall, today was just a fun day. This weekend, Coach Murphy and the Crimson Tide head to Clearwater, Florida for the 2023 Tax Act Clearwater Invitational. Four of Alabama's five games will be against top 20 opponents, including number two UCLA and sixth ranked Florida State. The 11th ranked Alabama gymnastics team competed against some tough competition as well this past weekend as the Tide took part in the Metroplex Challenge in Fort Worth, Texas. The Gym Tide scored a season best score of 198, but that would be just .125 behind number one. Oklahoma. The Tide finished second ahead of Arkansas and Stanford. The Tide led the Sooners 148-475 to 148-450 heading into the final rotation. Alabama closed out the night with a season high 4-9-5-2-5 on vault. Luisa Blanco along with Jordan Paradise and Mandari Doggett all tied for the vault event title with matching scores of 9-9-2-5. Really great performance by Ashley Johnson's squad, just 1-2-5 behind the nation's number one team in the country. Indeed, Roger, and with that season-high score of 198, Alabama moves back into the top 10 at number 9. The gymnastics team is on the road this Friday as they take on Georgia in Athens. Crimson Tide will return home next Friday as Alabama host LSU. 20th-ranked Alabama baseball team will open up the season this weekend at the Joe. Coach Bohannon visits the show to talk about the Tide season opener. That and more coming up next right here on Tide TV this week. Welcome back to Tide TV This Week. The Alabama men's tennis team was in action here in Tuscaloosa this past weekend. George Husak's Tide took on Wisconsin and 22nd ranked Northwestern. On Friday against Wisconsin, the Tide fell behind 3-1, but closed out the match with three consecutive singles wins to capture the 4-3 victory over the Badgers to improve to 7-1 on the year. On Sunday, 22nd ranked Northwestern was just too much as the Wildcats emerged victorious over the Tide 4-2. The Alabama women's tennis team looked strong on Saturday in their match against UAB here in Tuscaloosa. Jenny Mine's squad won the doubles point and then proceeded to win all six singles matches to sweep the Blazers 7-0 to improve to 4-2 on the year. Well, it's that time of year again, Roger. It's almost spring, and that means it's time for some baseball. Softball, of course, started their season last weekend, and this weekend it's baseball's turn. For more on the Tide season opener this weekend at the Joe, our Delaney joins, joins, us, now, joins us now along with baseball head coach Brad Bohannon. Excited to have you in the studio today with us, Coach Bohannon. You hosted Fan Day this past week out at the Joe. How great was it to see the turnout and get the opportunity to scrimmage in front of a crowd before the season starts? Yeah, we had a great turnout. I really appreciate all of our fans coming out. And, um, you know, this is such an awesome group of kids. And I tell everybody in the community that I come across, so, hey, come get connected with this group. Um, they're, they're very talented, but also just a, a really mature and, and awesome group of young men. So. Uh, we had a fun day, the weather was great, and had a good scrimmage, and it was a really positive day for our program. You have a really large freshman class this season. What have you seen for them so far, and what are you looking to see leadership-wise from the veterans on your team? Yeah, we have um, you know a big freshman group, but also a, a big older group, and uh, it's been the most mature group, one of the most mature groups I've ever had, not just in age and number of at-bats, but just in the way that they work and they prepare. So those older guys that have been here for a while, they've been really good examples to the younger players of how to go about their work. And uh, it's been a really low maintenance group at this point. 
Grayson Hick got named a preseason third-team All-American. Andrew Pinckney is returning, along with several other key veterans, along with some key transfers in that large freshman class. Do you feel like this is one of your more talented teams? It's clearly our most talented team. And, and look, I really like our group. Um, in one of the polls that just came out, four of the top five teams were from the SEC, seven of the top ten. So, um, you know, I don't think we really know how we're going to stack up uh, across the league until we get in the middle of league play. But, you know, we got some really good players and experience, and, um, you know, there's a lot to be excited about. Now, going off that, not to put any pressure on this team, but you have been ranked by several top 25 polls as high as 20th. Now, the season hasn't started yet, but that shows that the voters view this as one of the top teams in the country. How do you handle those expectations with the team? Well, whether you're ranked or you're not ranked, I think you always say that you're worried about the rankings at the end of the season, not at the beginning. But, you know, it's nice that some people outside of our dugout and locker room think that, um, you know, that we have good players and, and a good team. But at the end of the day, when you play in this league, you know, you, you are what your record says you are, and you have a chance to prove how good you are or how good you aren't. So um, I think where we're ranked in June is what matters the most. The season opens on February 17th in a three-game series against the Richmond Spiders. How do you approach that season opening, and what do you know about the Spiders, who are picked to finish third in their conference this year? Yeah, they have an older team as well. They have two of their three weekend starters back and an older group of position players. So it'll be a good challenge right out of the gate, you know. But again, we, we like our club, and uh, I think our kids would rather lose by 10 in the practice or scrimmage one more time at this point because we've been training for six months since August. So we'll be excited to play, and, and we'll play well. Well, thank you for coming in and talking with me today, Coach Bohannon. Good luck on the rest of the season, and roll tide. Hey, thank you. Roll tide. Abrams top of the key, a three-pointer on the way. Finally rolls in for Megan Abrams. She won't be two of the outs in the frame. That gets past Caldwell and right. One run's already in. Kahalen rounds third. She's coming home. An inside the park home run for the freshman. Welcome back to Tide TV this week. Those were our ATI Plays of the Week. Now let's take a look at our Players of the Week, brought to you by Legacy of Hope. Kicking it off, Brittany Davis had a career high in the Tide's ninth consecutive win over Auburn. Davis finished with 18 points and a career best, get this, 17 rebounds. That's pretty good. Montana Fouts was close to that. She tied her career best with 16 strikeouts in her first start of the season against Georgia Southern on Friday. Crimson Tide won the matchup 8-2 over the Eagles. And freshman Rylan Griffin came off the bench to lead the Crimson Tide with 16 points and Alabama's 77-69 win over Auburn. Griffin is very efficient, connecting on five of seven shots, including three of five from beyond the arc. The 16 points tied Griffin's career high. 
Pretty crazy, right? I love it. Congratulations to our Legacy of Hope Players of the Week. We hope you enjoyed it, and we look forward to being back with you again next week here on Tide TV This Week. That's right. Roll Tide, everybody. We'll see you next week. Roll Tide. This has been a presentation from Learfield.